Let's Podcast. Alongside Joe Giglio, I'm Joe Ovias inside the Eford Studios. Big thanks to Copiers Plus. Check them out online at copiers-plus.com. Print assessment, document management assessment. We are in the end game now when it comes to utilizing those printers, baby. I'm sorry, sir. (laughs) Copiers Plus is here in March for one reason and one reason only. To print out the perfect bracket. <laughs> Have you filled out your perfect bracket yet? It's back, Joe Ovius. You're bringing it back? It's back. Oh, boy. I'm back, baby. You printed it out on the Copiers Plus Kiosera? Absolutely. Copiers-plus.com. All right. So when are you going to unveil this bracket? Um, I actually have a new gambling column in the News and Observer coming soon. Look at you. Look out. Feels like my first ever NNO byline. Will it be? What do you mean? Well, maybe since 2020, anyway. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna say your first byline in the News and Observer. Yeah. What do you mean? You you wrote for the News and Observer. Oh, that's right. For a long time. That's right. My your, first gambling one. Though. Oh, your first yes, your first yes. official gambling one. Yes. This is how true. many how many tutorisms can I get into the first gambling Ooh. column? And that'll be something. That'll be something. <laughs> uh, we have a lot to get into today. I feel like I feel like honestly today is a, a an amusing day where we can just kind of go through. It's almost like a like a lightning round of things. Okay. Because there's a lot of stuff to get to. And I don't know, maybe, maybe do air horn to move on to the next thing. I I really don't know. So let's start. Okay. Let's start in a reaction to what we talked about yesterday. And probably the thing that got most amount of run yesterday. And that was me declaring NC state shit to be dead. Okay. It, It is over. And there seems to be some misunderstanding about what NC state shit is or isn't. And where Law of the Wolf fits into this. So before we start, let's actually get into the distinction between NC State shit and Law of the Wolf. You invented Law of the Wolf, so you yeah. tell me what that law is, Joe. Well, it uh, NC State shit implies a curse, mm-hmm. okay? That the reason Kyle Bambard missed the kick was that he was cursed. That the reason Chandler Parsons' 80-foot shot went in is because NC State is cursed Mm -hmm. that the reason uh, Billy Donovan didn't take the job, but Herb Sendek did (laughs) is because NC state's cursed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think you could probably explain or Chris Corciani's travel Mm -hmm. that I, I mark as the beginning of, of NC state shit is that because NC state's cursed, not the official was incompetent. Right. Like I, I'm not sure how much I get into the cosmos I believe in you get out what you put in, sure. but I don't think like something was actively out there working against NC State. Okay. But I do believe in the law of the wolf, and I still do. And the law of the wolf says, when you expect the most, you get the least. And we've seen this several times in baseball, basketball, football, pretty much any time NC State's ranked or expected to win the ACC, mm-hmm. they will fall flat on their face. Makes sense. Right? But the, the the inverse is also true. And just go to Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Kevin Cates was legitimately coaching for his job last yeah. week in, yeah. in Washington, D.C. So was there ever a time where the least was expected? Mm-hmm. Because when you expect the least, you get the most. That was certainly the most. And that was absolutely the most that we've seen. Even go back to the football season. They go to Duke. Mm-hmm. They play like shit in Durham. And you're going, this team stinks. What do they do? And they rattle off, and even Dave even said it himself. Then they rattle off five wins in a row, and you're like, what on earth is happening? That is law of the wolf. That is the law. Now, whether you that's indisputable. That is indisputable. Fine. So I just wanted to get that distinction out on the table. Back to NC State shit and cursed and and the mysticism and all that stuff. Whether you believe in it or not, it is a discussion. It's out there. People like to invoke it. Okay, so much so that when we came back from New Orleans for that very historical (laughs) final four between Duke and Carolina, I went into a witch shop and we bought a bunch of different stuff to do a curse reverse video ahead of that football season because they were expected to win the ACC that year. Exactly. So we went out, we went to Carter Finley Stadium. I mean, we buried Peter Goldenbach, Cold Goldenbach's book. <laughs> we burned the we the burned page the cover. Box, we burned no, we burned the box, box score, score of the Omaha trip. Wink, wink. Where yeah. did we get that one from? <laughs> where did that Where did that come from? Uh, we also buried a Clemson Coca Cola bottle. We poured that out. 
into the parking space. Zero, zero, 1983, I think. <laughs> right. So we did all these things and we always oh, sprinkled stuff in front of the visitor's locker room down protect, in the tunnel yep. you know, to protect NC State and things like that. And I think it worked somewhat, but it didn't work fully. Like there it worked somewhat because they won two games on missed kicks. They, they, they beat ECU and Carolina on, on missed, missed kicks. kicks. Yeah. So if that's not the curse reverse working, I don't know what is, but it wasn't a full blown NC State shit removal. And Video Joe, who we used to work with, Joe's an awesome dude. He put that video together. He did amazing yeah. work on it. And he texted us on Sunday. He goes, you know, it has to be asked. Did you two actually break the Wolfpack curse with your crystals and intents? And I said to him, no, not that. But perhaps the curse reverse needed a sacrifice. A true sacrifice. A real sacrifice. Not the burning of a box score. Not the pouring <laughs> out of a, a Clemson soda. Not sprinkling some uh, herbs around the visitor. No, it needed a sacrifice. And Joe, I can't help but think. Coincidentally. That maybe. You and I were the sacrifice. Somebody had to be fired in order for this to work. And you and I get or fired. Or some buddies. Or some buddies. We got fired. And notice, notice, the things turned around. So maybe it all ties together if you believe into the mysticism, the NC State shit curse. Now, let's say you don't believe in the curse. And this was the entire point of my statement. And why Kevin Keats will always get credit for this. You should put a statue of him up for this, okay? I'm not being facetious. I'm being sincere when I say this. Because with the win, with the way that it happened, with the events that occurred, how many things can we point to from the entire week in D.C. that you could have gone, man, that was just like 07. Man, that was just like 1997. Right up until halftime of the final game. Ben Middlebrooks hanging tech. That's It's over. How many people, how many people, there it is. How many people said, how many people texted us that, tweeted that, et cetera. Oh my goodness, there it is. Or the Alex O'Connell, or the Michael O'Connell, I keep doing Alex, Alex O'Connell, the Mike O'Connell shot, right? I'll get it right one of these days. <laughs> the Mike O'Connell shot, right? That swirls out. Oh. Every single time. Yes. And people go, like, there it is. That's his shit. Oh my God. Okay. So with this happening, this is not a statement of intent when it comes to the future of NC State. I'm not saying that with NC State shit being dead, that suddenly NC State is done sucking. Right. No, 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 no. That is not what I'm saying. So shout out to the, all the Carolina fans. Like, oh, they're still an irrelevant program. I didn't say otherwise. I did not say otherwise. I'm simply pointing out that it's now been removed. It's off the table. So the next time something, quote unquote, bad happens to NC State, man, that's just run of the mill. It's just like everybody else. Happens to everybody else. You got screwed. Join the club. Everybody gets screwed. But you can't point to NC State shit anymore. Like, why can't I? NC State, not, NC State shit's not dead. No, no, it is. You know why it's dead? Because 2024 happened. Because you can't sit here and tell me that NC State shit exists when I just gave you a list of reasons how you should have lost out of the tournament on any number of occasions, and you still want it. So NC State shit is dead. So people, do, am I making sense now? Mm -hmm. Okay, now. For those who don't believe in NC State shit, it's never been a thing. There's no curse. There's no that. Cool. My point still stands. In fact, I just gave you irrefutable evidence that it does not exist. See? So it's like, it's never, it never was a thing. Right. So if it was never a thing, you can now point to 2024 and say, see, I was right all along. Airtight logic. You can't argue against me. Sorry. It's over. I win the argument. NC State shit is dead, Joe dead but like, the law still lives the law will always live the law will always live so i was listening to the ion college basketball podcast yesterday and gary Parrish was uh livid livid that iowa state not just was on the two seed line but they were the fourth number two seed <laughs> that carolina got the last number one seed and Paris is going on about he was doing all these things about, see, they did this and they did this and they did this. And he just like, at first, conveniently left out their non-conference strength of schedule. And then when he did bring it up, he was like, it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter. It absolutely should matter. If you're taking the entire body of work while assessing a team, you do have to take into account that they have a non-conference strength of schedule that was in the 300s. 
And when you contrast that to North Carolina, who scheduled better and actually won some of those games, they had a better body of work compared to Ohio State or Iowa State. I don't know why this is complicated, but there are people out there that are very, very upset about the fact that Iowa State ended up being on the two seed line. <sighs> <laughs> I like Gary. He's really no, good. Gary's great. Gary's great. And I, I, I hate the cherry pick here. My number one takeaway from last from the last couple of weeks about our podcast that I've been really happy about mm -hmm. are the number of people who have texted me privately and said, that Patrick Stevens is a machine. He is a machine. Like <laughs> Patrick does the brackets for the Washington Post, but it's it's taken like our little spotlight to help push him to our audience. Yeah. For them to realize, oh my God, this guy gets it right every time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the reason Patrick gets it right every time is because he understands the principles of how the, the the tournament is selected and he doesn't get into conferences. He doesn't get into personalities. He doesn't get into anything else. He just understands why you get in and why you don't. Okay. Here's Iowa State. Here's what Iowa State did outside of the league. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Stop me when you when you hear something that that screams to you they should they should have been the number one seed instead of Carolina. They beat something called Lindenwood, <laughs> one hundred two to forty seven. That's not a real place. They beat. Idaho State, 86-55. They beat Prairie View A&M, 107-56. And they beat Florida A&M, 96-58. Oh, yeah. They beat New Hampshire, too. And they beat Eastern Illinois, 80-48. to All of those lopsided wins are the reason that the metrics and the net loved Iowa State the way that they did. Because they hammer-cocked all of these terrible 300-plus teams. Go Lindenwood. I'm going to click on the Ken Palm page to find out their nickname. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Lions. Okay. The Lindenwood Lions. Number 356 in Ken Palm. Yeah. You want me to reward a team with a number one seed in this tournament because they beat bad teams by a lot. Yes. Again, but look what they did in conference. Look at look at their net. Look at look. Oh, yeah, right. Well, their net is because of beating because, bad teams exactly, out of the league. Exactly, that's the part but that I people want, seem to misunderstand. I want you to say it again, and I want you to run this by the director of common sense. Mm -hmm. I want you to say it aloud. Sometimes you just have to hear it. Iowa State deserves to be the number one seed because they beat Lindenwood <laughs> by sixty-two points. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, the significant games that Iowa State played out of the league. They lost to Virginia Tech. Oh, let me check notes here. What what did Carolina do against Virginia Tech? Oh, oh, that's weird. Carolina beat Virginia Tech. You know what else Carolina did out of the league mm -hmm. before they got to the ACC? Oh, they beat Tennessee. Oh, that's weird. Oh, my God. Does, does that count for anything? I'm not in Gary's world. I mean, because you because crushing bad teams, and you know, while, that that's better. And while Carolina didn't win against Kentucky and Connecticut, they went out and challenged themselves against Kentucky now, and Connecticut. Now, so it, you it, have to reward teams for challenging themselves. That is a principle of the selection, ter the selection committee. To be fair to Gary Parrish, and I do agree with him and Matt Norlander, Matt Norlander when they say this. You shouldn't just get extra credit because you tried. But in the case of North Car in the case of North Carolina, not only did they try, but they also won games. They also were competitive in those games. Mm -hmm. And you also have to remember, too, in my opinion, once you start getting into those seed line scrubs and all the way they want to talk about it, you do have to compare the bodies of work. And if you're sitting here telling me that Iowa State's body of work is on the same level of North Carolina's body of work by just looking at straight numbers, I don't know what to tell you. Stop looking at the stop looking yeah. at the computer screen and look up. Look up. All right. Essentially, this is my version of saying go outside and touch grass. If you think that Iowa State has the same body of work as North Carolina, and it was the same discussion, it was not. If their non-con was two forty-three or one forty-three, cool. Okay, three hundreds, man, buddy. Three hundreds. What are we doing? Speaking of which. This also gets us into the entire conversation around the net. And we've now officially hit the point with net that I'm curious what the NCAA is going to do going forward. It's one thing when you have coaches throughout the season questioning net. And uh, I know Chris over at Dagon Box Scores, the Bless Your Chart newsletter that I've referenced a couple of times. So it's a really good newsletter. He always likes to point out that when the data starts to get questioned, the data starts to become useless. I'm paraphrasing here. And coaches 
by and large, are questioning the data way too much. And here's Rick Patino after St. John's didn't make it into the NCAA tournament, calling the net fraudulent. I mean, we're 32 in the net. Well, first of all, I, I think we all should probably never mention that word again because I think it's uh, fraudulent. You know, my son was 25 in the net, and he was saying he wasn't in um, with 25 wins. So I, I, I think the net's uh, something that shouldn't even be mentioned anymore. Um, I think that we had a good strength of schedule. Ken Palm, why, why mention him? We were 26 in Ken Palm. Of course, Ken Palm will tell you, do not use my metric for these things. It's a predictive metric. It yeah. is not a body of work metric. I, but that's where we are with net right now. It's a problem. It's a, it, There's a messaging problem for the NCAA okay. and how they treat the net throughout the entire, or how fans treat the net the entire season. I want people to understand this, and I, I need them to understand it now. Mm -hmm. Because we you learn lessons from NC State. You yeah. always learn lessons from NC State. Sure. Okay. NC State in 2019 had the highest net, right? It's first of all, it's not about your net. It's about your opponent's net. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's number one. Number two, who did you beat that is in the field? What was your record against the teams that are in the field? I promise you, this is the unwritten criteria of the NCAA tournament selection process mm -hmm. because St. John's had certainly would you would think St. John's and Seton Hall have these great arguments. I actually had to have this conversation with my brother in law who, you know, we're from New York, New Jersey area. And like people up there, are like the Big East only got three teams. Yeah. In. What happened? And I didn't realize it until I looked at their resumes. St. John's beat exactly one team that's in the field. They beat Creighton at home. That's it. You, you, you have multiple opportunities against UConn. You had multiple opportunities against Marquette. You had multiple opportunities against Creighton. Out of the league, they played Dayton. Dayton is in the field. Guess what? They lost to Dayton. Yeah. You might sit here and think, well, I mean, you lost one game. That was the only team they played out of the league that made the, the NCAA tournament. When I, this goes also back to NC State with Mark Godfrey in 2012. They beat St. Bonaventure, who ended up winning the A-10. Yeah. And everyone was like, they're the last team in. They didn't beat anybody. That. And then you point. That's look, why. Let me beat them. That's why. You have to beat at some point in that room. They have a conversation. Who did, who did they beat that's in the field? And the answer on this one is only Creighton at home. Two branch points on that before we get out of here. One related to NC State 2019 and one other about the Big East. And the Big East released a statement saying, we're very, very proud of UConn earning the number one overall seed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, man, shout out to Marquette. Shout out to Creighton. But here's the part that got me to crack up. These side seeds follow our most successful Big East tournament to date, which saw five sellouts <coughs> and our usual impassioned crowds at the world's <coughs> most famous arena. Arena. Our four-year extension with Madison Square Garden announced on Friday means that that event, that event, a New York City staple, will celebrate its 50th anniversary at MSG in 2032, a run unmatched in college basketball. What does that have to do with putting teams in the NCAA tournament? If that's not New York brain, I don't know what is. It's, ah, because this Italian restaurant is in New York, it automatically makes it one of the best in the world. No. Because I can put an Italian restaurant at a Durham toe to toe with an Italian restaurant up in New York any day of the week. What is what is we sold out the Madison Square Garden? We're going to be there for five more years. What does that have to do with anything? They, Why is it in the statement? The selection committee obviously doesn't look at where tournaments are played. Now, that's, that's a shame. That's a real shame. Which also gets us to NC State 2019, and we'll close on this. And Joe Lenardi continues to tweet through it at ESPN. So Debbie Yao, who deserves her flowers. <laughs> tweets out on March 16th. I got something better for Debbie, actually. Hiring a coach who could win the ACC was the goal. Thank you, Coach Keats, staff, and team for staying focused on the prize. You persevered through four years of inherited, quote-unquote, NCAA issues. True. Through the non-selection when we were number 33 in the net, etc. Proud of you. Cool, right? Cool. Here comes Joe Lenardi out of nowhere to go Neil deGrasse Tyson's like, well, you understand that in Star Wars, if you were actually to go to warp speed, I'm sorry, if you were go to light speed, well, you understand your brains would melt. Yeah, no, Neil, I get that. I'm watching a sci-fi movie. Cool. I know it's not real. Like, I understand that bombs can literally not drop down in outer space. I get that. But here comes Joe Lenardi to do his best. Well, actually, Debbie, in your moment of fun, I'm going to tell you no. Congrats, Pac. But let's not let the facts 
get in the way of a good story. The 2019 team has the worst non-conference strength of schedule in America, 353. It was never getting a bubble bid. But when you contrast that to Joe Lenardi's track record when it comes to picking brackets, it's not so hot. So don't let facts get in the way, Joe. Your bracket predictions suck. I don't know how else to put it. You can go to the bracket project right now and look at their five-year matrix of who's more right than wrong when it comes to bracket selections. You know who's usually pretty good and actually won it one year with the best bracket matrix? Patrizio. Patrizio. You know who's usually hovering around 100? Yeah, those no, it can't be 100. Dude, it's that bad. No. It's that bad. There's not even 100 people who pick. Oh, no, there are. For real? There are. Bracketology is nuts, dude. Absolutely. He also came at Pitt. This like, isn't like us being in the thousands on Apple Podcasts. It's still really good. No, no, no. It's not it's like not that. that. No, there, there is not like 30 There's million not bracketologists. Okay. <laughs> That's not how it counts. I got to keep it relative, you're, right? You're right? No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. No, there's like a lot of bracketologists out there, and he's not so hot. He usually gets a pretty so don't, don't, don't let the facts get in the way. You're not good at saying who's in and who's out, so I'm not going to take your word I, for it. I have to laugh, and I'll, I'll, I'll divulge here because I've yeah. obviously been communicating. <laughs> I've been communicating with Demi. Oh, one of the no, he came at Pitt too. Yeah, I just wanted to get that they, out of the way. And they had a bad like, non-conference. Pitt had an non-conference thing, and he's like, "Oh, I'm s-, like they Pitt had put out a tweet. He screen grabbed it." It was a terrible screen grab. It was such boomer energy on this tweet. He goes, I don't say anything about your non-conference trade. Joe, tell me where the ACC hurt you, dude. Tell me where the ACC hurt you. Anyway. I have to laugh at Debbie and Joe getting into it on Twitter because obviously I communicate with Debbie and she had sent me something just randomly about how she's still not over 2019. (laughs) (laughs) She was just kind of like, and I will never be. And I was like, yes. Yes. Beat (laughs) Auburn. We beat Auburn. <laughs> I don't blame her. Housekeeping. You know, Vada brings you housekeeping. They came out to the house today. Uh, needed it, too. It's been a busy couple of weeks in the obvious house and no time to clean. You know, Vana can take care of it. Check them out online. E-N-E-N-O-V-A-N-A dot com. Green cleaning. In fact, Kelly even said today, she's like, what I love about Eno Vana is that it's quick. Like two or three people in the house. Quick, efficient, in, out, clean house. Can't ask for better than that. And you can get them today. Just go to Enovana.com. You can do a one-time cleaning just to kind of get uh, your bearings, or you can do a recurring recurring cleaning like I do. I was going to say, don't be intimidated or think, oh, I can't afford this, or I'm going to get locked into no, some sort of like year-long do contract. Do when you want. It's like, no, you, you can work with Enovana. Come out and help yourself. Big thanks to Longleaf. They're going to host us on Thursday, 1 o'clock for our big basketball bracket bonanza. Very excited about that. You have a lot that. of names for it. I was just going with um, brisket and basketball oh. and bourbon. Ooh, and, and bris- yeah, brisket. <laughs> bourbon now I got all the bees again. See, now you got all the bees. <laughs> triple B. Wait, I don't want, I don't want a ball coming after me. Can't call it triple B. Yeah. Don't want that. But we're going to be out there this Thursday. Breeze through our friends at breeze through. Check them out. Locations across the triangle, locations across the state. Check them out. Breeze through.com. They're going to help us celebrate on Thursday as well. Breeze through freeze crew in the house. We will be giving away four tickets to Sunday's Toronto Maple Leafs game. You get not just tickets, sir, but not just tickets. You also get one Olympia ride with the breeze through freeze crew. You get the blanket, you get the shirts, you get all that fun stuff. So here's how it's going to work on Thursday while we're doing the show, start at one o'clock. Show us that we're going to go Mr. B style. Show us you are subscribed to us on either YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. Okay. And at 2.30, we're going to draw somebody random to win those four tickets and the Olympia ride to Sunday's game. Cool. Oh, I love it. Cool. I love it when all these ideas come together. I love it. So, so we're giving away hockey tickets mm-hmm. Thursday. Yes. At the Longleaf Swan. Yes. When they're, we're there for the bracket show at one o'clock. Yes. We've got free ice cream. Yes, from two roosters. On Thursday? Yes. From two roosters? Yes. And the OG media is going to buy bourbon for people? Yes. Some people? Select customers? Let's go. Let's go. Big thanks to Homefield, homefieldpair.com. Check them out. Use that promo code OG23 to save 15% off your order. Yes, that promo code still works. Had a couple questions about that. You want to get into that third month mania action. You want to get re- retro. As I joked with Connor from Homefield yesterday when I was checking in, I cannot wait to see the 2024 retro shirts in 2044. Because you know home field is going to be 
yeah. all about. Hey, it. Homefield, just put a banner on a shirt. State fans will buy it. Absolutely. Mitch Northam, he covers women's college basketball. He is with NPR. You can check him out online. Primetime Mitch. What up, Mitch? What's going on, man? Not much. Um, you know, uh, thankful I got to have some Colonel Taylor with Julio the other night. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> is this is that why this bottle no, looks the way no, that it looks? Mitch was not the culprit that he, <laughs> I, he I had a sipper or two, but you know, not not too much. Okay. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. Fair <laughs> enough. And of course, Mitch getting a wonderful shot of us talking to Roy Williams, which oh, one other note. And Roy was wonderful with this time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you guys you're you're kind of working with Roy right now on something. We'll see if it can happen. But to kind of further solidify my point about NC State shit being dead, all right? Look at what you did to Roy Williams on Saturday <laughs> night. Look what you did. <laughs> that wasn't me. No, not you. I'm talking about NC State. Oh. Not only did you beat Carolina, you did it with Roy in attendance and look what look how disappointed you made Roy he Williams. Still feels a deep, man. Look, it's a great sweater. Way around it. Oh, it is a great sweater. Yeah. That was that's what we were talking about. That's, that is a great sweater. Yes. That is a great sweater. Speaking of the Wolfpack, Mitch, now that NC State shit is over, I'm going to assume that Wes Moore and the Wolfpack are winning this whole thing, right? Well, so my initial reaction when the bracket came out was that, man, this is a really tough reason for region for NC State. But then kind of taking a second look at it, I'm kind of like, I don't know. I can see a path to the Final Four. Um, you talk about NC State uh, stuff or NC State shit being dead. Um, they don't have to play you, so there's that. Um, and the committee did what I thought that they wouldn't do. They sent UConn to Portland, which is really surprising. Um, but not in NC State's region in Portland. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think NC State has a pretty decent path to the Final Four. Um, You know, they they might have a – really, I mean, the toughest kind of, you know, hurdles for them will be likely these the second round and Sweet 16 matchups with Tennessee and Stanford, who have two of the best inside defenders and run protectors in the game, and Tamari He and Cameron Brink. So they're going to need River Baldwin to step up and play well in both of those games, or they'll need to adapt and maybe go the other way and play some small ball with Mimi Collins at the five some. But the biggest thing for them is going to be, you know, being consistent on the defensive end, which they were in Greensboro, and then shooting well from the free throw and three point lines, which is something they needed to fix coming out of the ACC tournament. And maybe they fix that with these two home games coming up. So there, you're telling me if the bracket holds for him, which it does a lot in women's basketball, they get to play Kelly Harper at Reynolds in round two? Indeed. Um, yeah, I think this is Kelly Harper's first trip back to Reynolds Coliseum since she was fired in 2013. Um, it's kind of also interesting because she worked under Westmore at Chattanooga um, from, I think, 01 to 04. Um, it's also worth noting that Tennessee and NC State played in a closed door scrimmage in the preseason in Boone. Um, so these teams know each other a little bit. Um, Kelly and West know each other. Um, it's also, you know, the first round opponent that NC State is going to face is Chattanooga, where, you know, West coached for 15 years. Wait, and you're telling me now, wait a second. I, I, first of all, he's going to national championship. Hey, just the final four would be would be a nice little No, break you're for, right. It, it would be for West. Yes, it would. You're telling me bracket luck that is actually owed to Westmore has now been paid back. They're not with South Carolina. They're not with Iowa. They're not with UConn. Right. That's Tell the thing. Dead. Tell me it's no, not dead, Joe. Wait, I'm gonna need is Nina King still in charge of the women's selection committee? <laughs> I don't think she is actually. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, you know, they don't face any of these like real juggernauts in the sport this year. Yes. Like Texas is in their region, but Texas's best player got injured in December. Now they've played well and they got the fourth one seed. Um, but, and they've been led by a freshman Madison. Uh who's really good. I see the potential issue though, bitch. I I see the potential issue. What's the potential Um, issue? Maryland. I see the potential fly in the ocean. I see. I see. (laughs) Uh, yeah, Maryland is um, not as good as as they are and have been in years past. This year, they they're probably going to lose that first round game to Iowa State, but you never know. Brenda Free is really good coach, but yeah. So NC State they they avoid 
Iowa, LSU, UCLA, USC, um, UConn, South Carolina. Like they, there is a path there if they play as well as they can, as well as they played against UConn in November, as well as they played against Colorado, as well as they played, um, you know, for the most of the ACC tournament, just without that shooting that kind of killed them against Notre Dame. And I feel like in looking at the bracket, uh, the North Carolina squad does not have the same kind of bracket luck. No, sir. They, they do not. No. Um, no. This It's kind of interesting. You know, I, I can see – because this is a North Carolina team that's had a really just uneven season. Yeah. Um, yeah. They've had some really good highs. You know, beating State, winning at Notre Dame was a big thing for them. You know, just beating Louisville by double digits at home, Syracuse by double digits at home. But then, you know, you lose in the first round of the ACC tournament to a Miami team that that should have gotten in this tournament field and was probably the biggest snub. Um, kind of kept the ACC from getting nine teams in. Instead, they have to settle for eight, um, which is something the men's side, that's a number they would like to hear. But um, the women's side, they were hoping for nine. But, yeah, so this Carolina team, um, you know, it's weird. I can see them losing in the first round to Michigan State. But I can also see them winning that game comfortably and then playing really well against South Carolina in the second round. Um, again, like this is a North Carolina team that led South Carolina by 11 at one point when they met in November. Um, for whatever reason, this UNC core, Deja Kelly and Alyssa Usby, they haven't beaten South Carolina, but both times they've played them earlier this season and in that 2022 Sweet 16 game in Greensboro where they played them tougher than anyone else on South Carolina's way to the national championship, they're not afraid of South Carolina. So I'm kind of interested to see if Carolina can get to that game, how they play, and is it possible they can pull off the impossible? So one other, to get away from the ACC, you know, women's college basketball is having a moment. Mm -hmm. Ratings have been good. Uh, The coverage around women's college basketball has been excellent. Uh, ESPN, I think is doing a, an intriguing thing where they're weaving both the men's and the women's bracket discussions together. I mean, I don't know if you noticed that. I know on Sunday when I was kind of just, I had ESPN on the background while I was you know, cranking out some content. Um, Cause you know, Mitch, the content never sleeps. That's the right. um, I noticed that at one point they were talking about this. It was clearly, they were talking about the men's side of the bracket. And then that panel would then transition over to the women's side, like seamlessly. I thought that was really interesting. I, I think it's good. No, it's unbelievable. But I hope, I hope mm-hmm. I, at the risk of rooting for things that are awesome. I would love to see a final four with not only South Carolina and NC state on one side, yes, but man, Iowa and UConn, like if you are a college basketball, if you're a basketball fan, that's what you want to see. Caitlin Clark and Paige Bukers would be just and that's, off and that, the charts. And that's man. what I was leading up to because there's the the basketball knowers aspect of this when it comes to women's college basketball basketball. And then there is the Caitlin Clark factor. And I mean, there's like there's a documentary that's following her leading through this. It's being positioned as one of the best to ever do it, not just in a specific subset of basketball, but all of college basketball. I mean, that reminds me. I'm not ready for the. T- I'm not ready for the industrial take complex to go on Caitlin Clark if they don't make it to the Final Four. Yeah, and That's she. I mean, they, they don't have an easy path, um, no. which I was kind of surprised by. You know, because at the end of the day, the committee, like their job, is to put together a television show, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, this this is an entertainment product. This is why we have some of the matchups that we have. This is why we have a rematch of. UConn and Ohio State in the Sweet 16, you know, why we have, you know, Westmore versus Kelly Harper potentially in the second round and why there is potentially a Iowa LSU game in the Elite Eight, which would be a rematch of last year's national championship game. Um, I think part of the reason why they gave LSU in this Albany two region a, a hard road to get back to the final four to defend their title is because they scheduled really, really softly, <laughs> um, frankly, mm-hmm. in their, in their non-conference slate. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot, I think in the media world, if you're ESPN or you're anybody invested in this tournament um, on Caitlin Clark, getting back to the final four. Um, oh, so cool. yeah. And her, her path is not easy. You know, there's, um, you know, they should get out of the first round. West Virginia and Princeton are good teams, but I don't expect them to, to trip up there. Um, you know, Kansas State is probably who they're going to see in the Sweet 16, and that's a rubber match game. They've already played K-State twice this year. 
um, and lost once at home and then beat them on a neutral court in Florida in an MTE. And then they're probably going to have to play LSU or UCLA, two of the, I mean, top 10 teams in the country. So that'll be pretty interesting. And yeah, I, there's definitely a chance that she doesn't get there. I'm not ready. Because you know how you know how it's gonna go. Because you know sometimes you transcend onto the national discussion scene. The first yes. there there are you know, people out there chomping at the bit to get the ticks off. About they're it. ready, man. They are, and not in a good way. I've been paying attention all year. Yeah, sure. Yes. You have. Caitlin Clark sure you has. Have. You know, people. You know, she 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 was doing the Kobe Bryant. Too much. She's no Kobe. I'm she, like, oh, boy. she was. Pay, paying too much attention to her commercials. Oh, here yeah. we go. Yes, it's, it's, it's going to be all that. Yeah. You know it's coming, man. You know it's coming. <laughs> it's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> Radio takes. <laughs> all right, Mitch, we appreciate the time, uh, and we appreciate you helping us out with Women's College Basketball. We did receive a nice note from the ACC about your coverage of ACC Women's Basketball, and they're happy that you've been coming on. So we appreciate your time, and I'm sure we'll check in later. All right, yeah. Shout out to Shout out to the – the nice notes and um yeah happy to be on anytime i'm going to columbia this weekend to see if the tar heel women can pull it off and then uh i'll be in albany and then in cleveland so you got your hats picked out not yet uh i gotta gotta arrange those <laughs> we got patrick for bobbleheads yeah and we have mitch for the hat game because the hat right. game is impeccable all right Mitch, we'll talk to you later man all right thanks for having me Big thanks to Whitaker and Hamer for sponsoring Ovi's and Gilio. Check them out, wh.lawyer. Did not need them on the way to D.C. Did not need them on the way back from D.C. You and I are not traveling to Arizona for the Final Four. We're not going to road trip that? No. Oh, you know, I'm kind of sad that we're not going to road trip that because I'd love to watch you try to live bet the entire road trip. Oh, my account would be gone. <laughs> likely, likely. Gone. I actually did the thing today where I like, I put some future bets in on the golf that I like to do. Yeah. Because I was like, uh oh. Yeah, we'll get I'm, into that. I'm, I'm running out of money. I was going to say, we're going to get that in a second. I've actually made money, but we'll get into that in a second. So, uh, big thanks to Whitaker and Hamer. Again, attorneys and counselors at law, check them out online at wh.lawyer. Uh, let's say you bought a house, you got to take it to closing. You refinance. Again, Whitaker and Hamer can help you. If you're looking to buy or sell a house, Hometown Realty can help you with that. Myhtr.com. Big sign blessings in Garner. Big blessings for you when it comes to buying and selling your home. It's getting warm out. People are thinking about, you know, this is when the frenzy starts. Get on it. Yeah. You know, if you want to be ready for next school year, now is the time. Yes. You got to be in place. And if, especially if you're selling your house, don't think you can do this on your own and maximize the price for your house. Use the experts. Use hometown realty. Go to myhtr.com. Buy, sell, calculate. Also, big thanks to Two Roosters, tworoosters.com, ice cream. It's fantastic. They're rotating their flavors all the time. they got experimental flavors as well. Uh, sometimes you just got to try them once. They're, they're the kind of flavor, flavors that you go, I just got to try them once. No, sir. And then there's Joe who <laughs> no. finds a flavor and then never no. deviates. Sir. That's how it works. <laughs> Fast That's how it works. ball. Fastball. And I'm pumped. They're coming Thursday. Yeah, they're going to be I'm, Thursday. I'm super excited. that they, They're at the arena. They have the stormy tracks. They have soft serve. Mm -hmm. They have Sundays. They uh, listen. There's a line, and I get it, but there's a reason there's a line. It's really, really good. So do yourself a favor. Go find a location near you. Go to the go to the OG Epicenter in Lake Boone. They'll, they'll hook you up. So I continue to experiment with our um, DraftKings app. We do have a bracket pool. We, we do, do. We do have a bracket pool. Yes. Um, in fact, I need to go ahead and pull it up on our Instagram account to let everybody know what it is. If you put in, <laughs> I was going to say, here's our bracket code on DraftKings. Are you ready? Write it down. I'm going to give everybody some time to, to uh, grab a pen and paper or open up their phone and type it and text themselves. 9XFSITX. I put it on our Instagram account. Not say it again. 9XFSITX. Yep. I did put it on our Instagram account. So just go to OG Triangle Media on Instagram and you'll find the code posted. 9XFSITX. Yes. Look on the screen. What, what do we got here? What do, what, what do we do? Oh, yeah. There it is. You put it on the screen. 
How about that? The other thing I could just hold my phone up, but that's neither here nor there. So yeah, anyway, use that code to get into our bracket. Uh, use the promo code OG24 as a new user and you'll get some bonus bets. We'll get into that in a little bit. So, But like I was trying to tell you, I am trying to, you know, I, because I've never done wagering before mm -hmm. and there's a lot of options here. And like last night, I was kind of goofing around with the, um, with the live bets and, and everything else. You'll be proud of me. I won $33.75 on a $5 bet for tennis. And I don't never heard of these people before. You won a tennis bet? I won a tennis Actually, bet. Actually, I don't even care that you won. You placed a tennis I bet. I placed a tennis bet just because why not? And it was a uh, it was a parlay. And I won. I also did my personal favorite thing to do is those bonus bets, um, including this one about uh, Jalen Brunson and uh, Steph Curry uh, having a bunch of points and threes. Yeah. I put 10 bucks down on an odds boost, got 20 bucks back on that. And uh, of course, you've got that live line as well. But with the tournament, some of the things that I've done are like four pick par plays, futures. For instance, do you have a number five seed to win an NCAA tournament, to win the entire NCAA tournament? Yes. I put 10 bucks down. That'll pay out 260 if it happens. Um, you know, what's the exact seed number? Exactly eight plus 950, all, all that kind of stuff. You know, like, look at me, you. I, can we just stop? We to need to me, pause. To me, this to is actually that more you, fun than trying to fill out a bracket. That you took, no, no, no. Uh, the, that you, you placed a tennis wager. I did. Is the headline here. Do not bury the lead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you said, I had no idea who they were. No. Did, did you do what I did? And you're like, they're from Switzerland. They stole your money. Bet against them. <laughs> Did you didn't have a preposterous reason? No, I, I did not, I did right, not I, do that. I got my play of the day for you. What You're is your play Locked of the day? and loaded because only true gamblers bet on the NIT. Yeah. And the NIT. Nobody wants to go to the NIT. The man. NIT is all about who wants to be there. True. And I promise you, I promise you, the South Florida Bulls, Mike Kelly's South Florida Hell Bulls, yes. who lost in the American Athletic Conference championship game. Mm-hmm. I think they not only do they want to play, they're playing their in-state rival, Central Florida. Mm -hmm. They're also getting five and a half points when in doubt. Not only is it when in doubt, take the points. When in doubt, take the Bulls plus five and a half tonight. You know, we got a big Wake Forest App State game in the NIT on Wednesday. We do. I'm not 100% sure that my Deeks want to be there. Uh, I don't know App if the Deeks want to be there. <laughs> they, they don't want to take the stairs. Let's mm. be real. They don't mm. want to take the stairs. All right. Big thanks to DraftKings. Use that promo code OG24. DraftKings, official sports betting partner of NASCAR. It is now live in North Carolina. You can legally bet on all your favorite sports anytime, anywhere, right in North Carolina with DraftKings. And for a limited time, new customers who sign up with the promo code OG24 and bet five bucks will receive $250 instantly in bonus bets. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using that promo code OG24. Bet $5 to get $250 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code OG24. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-18543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook slash NC. NASCAR is not a sponsor of this promotion and used under license. Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline is our friend Brooke Pryor, a.k.a. Senior Russell Wilson Correspondent. Brooke, what up? Oh, what a title. What a title. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to um, say that while I know that you believe that NC State shit is dead. Yes. I think a Freaky Friday situation happened and it has now been transferred to me. Like I was in the building to watch UNC lose. Mm -hmm. And I think all of the juju from NC State shit has been just just transferred into my being. Um, and that is evidenced by, I, I think, I think the transfer started bef before I was there. Like that, that was the apex of it. But prior to that, I had Russell Wilson signing at midnight, Justin Fields trade happening like two hours before tip off. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then last night at about 1 a.m., I realized that I, in fact, had not applied for for credentials to cover the NCAA tournament in Pittsburgh, where NC State is playing in just a few days. So rules of three, that's what's happening to me. And um, I guess I have no choice but to embrace it. Yeah, no, you might as well just live that life now, Brooke. I, I am not going to lie to you, Brooke. When you texted us and you're like, I'm here. I was like, ooh. 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 <laughs> What's the money line? North Carolina is not playing Miami in football and Brooke is in the building. I, w- I want you to know that my ooh. own husband said, I'm going to take NC State in the first half. UNC never plays well when you're there in the first half. And then Cormac Ryan hit a three. Oh, that's a stinger. I See, I don't know how how bets work. I he took, <laughs> neither do I. I he thought he could have got points. money yeah. from that, but yeah, he could have if he had points. Yes, I think I think he had the points. Okay, good. Okay. I'm not entirely positive, but um, yeah, he didn't tell me what he bet in the second half, probably because he didn't want to make me mad. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I will say, I'm not even mad that UNC lost because NC State's a team of destiny, and in fact, I'm really pumped that they're in Pittsburgh because I want to talk to the big man about his. Three point shooting form because it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Um, is Russell Wilson going to see his wolf pack? I mean, listen, the minute that he tweeted, like, let's go at Pac Man's B ball with the trophy, I also, I already have Twitter alerts turned on for Russell Wilson, and it really just felt like a personal troll. It was like, here is a gaping wound. I'm going to pour an entire container of Morton salt into it. I, now that you have access to Russ, I need you to like to do like a nice story about his complicated relationship with NC State. He was booed again on Friday. He was, yeah. Was on he Friday. really? Yes, yeah. they yeah. they have a thing. This had happened at the ACC tournament the year after, or the months after he had this the famous graduation speech, right? Right, twenty sixteen or whatever it was. But on Friday night, they they do this every at every ACC tournament. They do famous alum. Yep. Notable alumni. And when it got to Russell Wilson, he was booed again. And there weren't even that many state fans there on Friday. And I was like, man, this guy. Talk about destiny. It's my destiny to write this story. I think it is. It is. It is. So I've had a it's been a lot of fun. I have um a lot of NC State friends, and I've enjoyed over the last week texting them and being like, What are your Russell Wilson memories? Everyone has had a class with Russ at some point is what I've gathered so Mm -hmm. far. Like people from different friend groups are like, oh, yeah, I was in an intro to communications class. He was in my English class. Like who knew state people went to so many classes? Who knew that Russ went to so many classes? I certainly didn't. Um, Fighting Brooke. Brooke, Don't don't open the door, Brooke. It's so easy. Don't open the door. I am so sorry. North Carolina person shocked that. There go people are going to class. Wow. I mean, nobody posts about it on message boards for state, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, no. Luke May went to class after he beat he did. the shot nope. against Kentucky. Yeah, so. As, he should, as, as he should have. But my takeaway is that it it has been just very interesting to see you're right, the complicated relationship yeah. with Russ. And I gotta say, I went into his intro presser. Last week, very skeptical. I have been on record as a longtime Russell Wilson hater is probably too strong a word. I have not been a big fan, and I have taken the easy layups when they have presented themselves sure. as it relates to Russ. Sure. However, I came out of that presser feeling like, I think I'm going to really like covering this guy. I think he went through something in Denver. I think that... I don't want to say that he was humbled or or has a sense of humility because I don't know him in that way yet. But I he he felt more genuine than he has come across in previous pressers, in previous stops. And I do think it's because being benched in Denver for Jared Stidham, like that'll do something to a you're you're not the guy that you're not the franchise guy that you were in Seattle. You've got some scars now. And I think that he realizes that like he's wanted in Pittsburgh and that it's he, he's never been someone that, from what I understand, has just accepted what's been given to him. Like he's going to work for it. And I feel like he's got this renewed work ethic that is just going to be ramped up even more so now with Justin Fields in the fold. Isn't Russ the perfect quarterback for Mike Tomlin, though, because he he just doesn't make mistakes. Yeah, I mean, and and we got to be honest, like. That's all the Steelers need. Yeah. They need Superman. They need someone 
that's not going to get sacked 500 times a game, which Russ did have a problem with that, as did Justin Fields. So if he can just not do that, uh, if he can play more like the Russell Wilson of last year versus the Russell Wilson of two years ago, they're going to be fine. Just get the ball to the playmakers. And, And Russ said that in his opening press conference. Like, I know we've got two great running backs. We've got a lot of playmakers. I just have to get them the ball. Great. Remember that when the season has started, and that's what Arthur Smith's system is all about. Like, you're really minimizing the role of the quarterback. And to do that, you need someone that is on the field, doesn't have an ego, is not playing and making a bunch of mistakes, and is just facilitating the playmakers to get the ball down the field. And I I got the sense that he understands that role. What I know we don't have that much time, but how on earth did the Steelers get Justin Fields for at best a fourth round yeah. pick? No market for him. It, well, it, it really, it really first. does make me it does make me reassess what? how things are discussed on a national level, right? And this I'm guilty of it, Brooke, where I will watch Get Up, I will listen to the national take, all that kind of stuff. And they're just hyperventilating over Justin Fields and whether or not he's the future, this and that. Clearly, and I know what the steel, I know what the, the the Bears said. They tried to facilitate a place that he actually wanted to go to. But to I, me, that, that just screams, no, there was no market for Justin Fields, and all that bluster was exactly that. There there was no market in terms of first round pick. I don't think in terms of second round pick. From what I understand, the Bears did have an offer on the table that was better than what the Steelers were okay. offering. But that situation, he was not going to be a starter. He was going somewhere where there was an entrenched starter. Now, I've been told he is not going to start in Pittsburgh at least week one. Like the understanding that has been communicated to Justin Fields is that Russell Wilson is the starter. Mm -hmm. Fields is coming in to learn behind Russ, and we'll see where it goes from there. To me, I think that the Steelers got lucky in terms of the mutual interest between Justin Fields and Mike Tomlin. And Ryan Poles doing Justin Fields a solid. Uh, that's that's a huge part of it. And also, like, I would take out a full-page thank you ad to Kenny Pickett for blowing things up. Because <laughs> if Kenny Pickett hadn't said on Sunday night, Monday morning, when Russell Wilson tweeted out the Renegade video with terrible towels and year 13, all things that someone coming in to be a backup or to – just compete for the starting job. They're not tweeting that Russ knew kind of what he was doing and it had been communicated to Russ. He was more than likely the starting that had been communicated to Kenny Pickett at that point. Pickett says, well, I don't want to be here anymore. I'd like to go somewhere else. And that set things in motion to trade him to Philly, to get that extra draft capital and then now trade for Justin Fields. But none of this happens if Kenny Pickett doesn't feel some type of way about yeah. Russell Wilson coming in and feel some type of way about the organization publicly saying for months, we believe in Kenny, we believe in Kenny, just kidding. We believe a little bit less and now we're going to bring in Russell Wilson. So it, it was incredibly fast moving. I had had an idea Friday that it could happen. Clearly not enough of an idea to stay at home and, and monitor the situation and take my talents to the district of Columbia um, but, you know, I love the adrenaline rush. And now I have two newsmakers in my locker room and I'm thrilled about it, even if it means I have to spend a lot of time reading Pack Pride now. On that note, Brooke Pryor, who has now been transferred the gift and the curse of NC State shit, uh, joining us at the Easter Automotive Group Hotline. I, you know, it's not like we weren't going to talk to you this upcoming football season, but oh my goodness, I can't think of a better hook now. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm I'm excited that you guys are excited. Right. And I just it, you know, it really is a shame that Matt Canada is no longer here <sighs> because at that point, I think that one of you would have to just move to Pittsburgh. Like I wouldn't be able to fully convey the just NC State Pittsburgh vibes that are happening. I am not as much of an oh, expert man. in it. You guys would really crush that. So this is the first time since what? 2018 that the Steelers have a functional offensive coordinator and a functional quarterback or the one last draw yes. for Ben 
19, yeah. was it 19 his last hurrah? Although something would say uh, no, 1920 was his last hurrah. The first year after the elbow was when they yeah, came yeah. out and they were like 10 or 11 and 0. That's right. And then the elbow went off a cliff and the rest of the Steelers followed. Those- that that was the old gunslinger drawed up in the dirt, YOLO football. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. Matt Canada came in in 2021 and we know how that went. And some, would, and some would say that Arthur Smith overcomplicates things. A little, a little, oh, a little paralysis by analysis. We'll see, I, we'll I, see what happens. I think though. he's a great. I think we'll Ross is a great fit. This is the Ryan Tannehill Tennessee stuff. I, I think they're going to do really well. As Brooke, long as he accepts his role, yes. Brooke, we appreciate it. We will talk to you later. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Big thanks to Butcher's Market for sponsoring Obies and Gilio. TheButchersMarkets.com. Locations in Wilmington, by the way. I think they just opened up location number two in Wilmington. Yeah, they're not fooling around. To go along with the new location at Lake Boone, which is the OG home base for a lot of our corporate champions. So go to TheButchersMarkets.com. I think I'm going to break out the manicotti that's sitting in the freezer this week. Five cheese. It's really good. Or as I like to call them. Italian enchiladas. Perfect. I love those things. So thebutchersmarkets.com. Big thanks to Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority. You can start bundling and saving right now at bugsbite.com. It's getting warmer. The bugs are going to be outside. Mosquitoes, you don't want them to be a problem. You don't want no problems with mosquitoes. That's where Mosquito Authority comes into play. And as it gets warmer, you got little dudes that want to get in the house. Ants, roaches, that kind of stuff. Pest Authority can handle that. So bundle and save at bugsbite.com. And speaking of your home, you can protect it with bugsbite.com, but you can also protect it with insurance, which is key. And that's where Matt Davis comes in. State Farm, insuregarner.com, voginsurance.com, or just call Matt directly at 919-779-8277. Yeah, when in doubt, give him a call. Save yourself some money. Uh, A lot of you have, and appreciate everyone who has. That was one of the things that Matt had told us at the ACC tournament. There's a lot more people calling than just the ones who reach out on social media. So just be smart. Have that conversation. 919-779-8277. Save yourself some money. So we're back from the ACC tournament. And look, NC State, clearly the the star of it. And there were two main things that came out of the ACC tournament, NC State's unprecedented ACC tournament championship. One is my personal favorite, people going back through old videos and leaving comments about how, well, this aged well. And yeah, we spent a good chunk of time in the, least, in the weeks leading up to the ACC tournament about Kevin Keats's future. And there were some that were like, this is kind of amusing in retrospect because winning the ACC championship kind of, eliminates, you know, unless Kevin Keats wants to go somewhere else, like this eliminates any of that discussion because of the contract extension and everything else. And I'll say this, and I, I want to double down on something that I said yesterday because I know a lot of things get lost. And I've been giving Kevin Keats a ton of credit for, and that coaching staff a ton of credit for keeping that team ready to go through five straight days, right? The question going forward is going to be, how do you use this as a jumping off? What were the lessons learned? We understand the transfer portal can take a thing, give it, and things like that. Do fans learn that it's going to take a little bit of time with yet another class to get things going? Because you can see this happening at the last minute. It really does morph how we talk about things going forward. And I will say this, because I know it's going to happen. If they lose Thursday at midnight and we're doing a, we're going to do an extra after dark that night, they lose. doesn't matter. Like, honestly, it does not matter to me. It doesn't change any of the conversation. So the conversation going forward should be Joe. How does Boo Corrigan and how does Kevin Keats take advantage of what just happened, looking at the contract situation, and make it go forward in the right direction? Yeah, I, I think step number one is hiring a general manager to handle their NIL deals. Yes. Because it's a disadvantage, particularly in this area. I, I know it shouldn't matter, Joe, what, what Duke and Carolina are up to. Uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. But, but they have those things in place. They do, yes. And you want to have a similar structure. You're not going to have the same payroll. Mm-hmm. But you want to at least have that similar structure to yes. handle and be in, be ready and be in place. And that's what I've been talking about the last couple of weeks. And again, you do this multiple times. Sometimes you get a little worked up about stuff. My questions about NC State have always been about 
what are you? What do you want to be? How do you want to shape yourself in this era? What's the hook, so to speak, yeah. right? And, you know, you'll use NC State football as an example. I know what the hook is with Dave Dorn, but Dave Dorn was a lot, a lot of time to eventually get to that hook. And when we talked about the timeline and when the clock started for Kevin Keats, and I think you and I both agree, it's 2022. All right, if this is 2022 is the start, 2022 is the start, how do you take advantage of this going forward? And you get the message across to NC State fans, hey, if this is how you want it to be, these are the things that we need or these are the things that you have to understand. Yeah, it's for everybody, by the way. It really is. Yeah. It really is. The other thing that came out of the ACC tournament is your hair. <laughs> um, I got a couple of these comments. Uh, is Jiggy's hair going to be a thing or is he just having an existential crisis? <laughs> Uh, from <laughs> Michael. That's, that's much better than the mod insult, man. <laughs> from, Come on. from Michael, what the F with Chilio's hair? Buy, oh. put, put some product in it. Michael, you know I got the good product. Come on. It it's it's interesting. Like it does different things when you don't put product in it, though. So this is true. Like this is true. So you just look are you just growing it out? I don't know what I'm doing. Who was the Virginia player that you matched with? Oh, back it was in the my day? guy, Anthony Gill. Anthony Gill, thank you, yeah. thank you. You and Anthony Gill had like the, the only same thing hair. about Virginia that I ever liked. <laughs> Did I, I said that aloud? Okay, okay. On that note, we'll end it. That's going to wrap it up for today's show. We will see you Wednesday. Mm -hmm.